at the present time, all of the data coming out from Centre for Disease Control is showing it to be safe in pregnancy. Uh, there are studies that have come out, um, one from the states with approximately 4,000 women on a vaccine registry showing no differences in outcomes in any part of pregnancy or postpartum uh, in those women that receive the vaccine versus those that don't. I would also say that um, there has been some, I think, misinformation with respect to women getting it and, and fertility issues. There are no issues with the vaccine having any effect on fertility. Um, there's the central number you can call um, and book your vaccine, as well as Vitalite and Horizon both have uh, clinics that are up and running and book through pharmacies. Pharmacies will take pregnant women as well as the two clinics. Yes, all the data that we're seeing, um, overall generally women who are pregnant have more, uh, are at increased risk for more severe disease. Uh, increased risk for ICU admission, ventilation, and I think what's really brought it home uh, in the last, you know, week to two weeks is in Toronto. Um, speaking with colleagues there, um, they have a number of pregnant women in intensive care, ventilated, very, very sick. Uh, further to that, the our Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada came out with a statement that all pregnant women, 20 weeks and over should be um, offered and, and encouraged to receive the vaccine. Well, I understand that. I, I think any pregnant woman that you know I, I deal with wants what's best for her and baby. And I think the unknown here is probably the, the biggest factor. But what I always say to, to patients is you have to do a risk benefit analysis, whether that's pregnancy or whatever you're, you're trying to decide. And I think in this case, given again, the early data and what we're seeing that it's a safe vaccine, and again, taking it over here to say that pregnant women who get COVID are sick. You know, they can get very, very sick. Um, I, I think you, you have to kind of weigh that out. There, I would also encourage women to go on to websites such as the Society of Obstetrician and Gynecologists of Canada, um, there's a Canadian um, public health agency has has information and I'm very much for pay, people being informed so I you know and we actually give out uh, pamphlets here that covers a lot of the information for patients and I would encourage them to go on to the government uh, website that has that that information but I think you have to make an informed decision And another question I've been asked is if you receive your first dose when you're pregnant, can you get your second dose when you're, you know, have delivered? Absolutely, that there, there's no effect on, on timing that way at all. I think in many cases, um, we will often say in something that's somewhat unknown, 14 weeks and over is a good time to say, to get the vaccine, just given that first trimester with embryologic development and everything going on. But it, second to that, I would say, that for women who are in high risk areas, I think to get the vaccine whenever they can, whether that's first trimester onward, is, is well worth doing. In all of the studies that we're seeing, whether that's women getting it pre-pregnancy, early pregnancy, or later and, and after, all of the safety profiles are showing that there is no increased risk to that, any of that, you know, population. Um, and again, I think it's, a, it's worth a discussion with a healthcare provider if you're uncomfortable, but there would be no reason not to receive the vaccine, you know, if you're considering becoming pregnant. And again, if you inadvertently received the vaccine not knowing you were pregnant, again, I would not be worried about that. Again, we're pretty early into the actual um, data, but there is some evidence to suggest that antibodies could be crossed through from mom to babe through, through placental transfer. And I think if we look at some of the other vaccines that we do give in pregnancy, particularly pertussis, uh, that does confer benefit to the, to, the, to the fetus and then after birth. So there is some early data to show that that could be um, happening with, with this vaccine as well.
living in New Brunswick and, and the Maritimes in general, I think we've felt relatively safe, so to speak. I, I think where we need to have some concern and, and what we're seeing across Canada now with this third wave is once the cases come in, they're rising quickly with the variant, 30 to 70% more transmissible and maybe a bit of evidence to say it's more severe. So when women say to me, well, you know, we don't have any cases, it's low in New Brunswick, my reply is that can change very quickly. And in order to have that protection, you need that vaccine two weeks at least before you're, you have exposure to confer the benefit. So I think it's, it's more being um, proactive rather than you know, trying to catch up when we do have one of those rises or, or spikes. You know, we're seeing women come through here that have conceived, been pregnant and delivered. Is it without challenges? No, there are special considerations. And I think many women, it's required a bit of lifestyle change to have been pregnant during this pandemic um, because of the risk of contracting COVID. But, you know, I, I think it's like anything, there's no perfect time in life to do it. And I would say to women, and I know there are women who are struggling with increasing age or infertility or all of these things. And I think there's no perfect time to do this. So if you were planning a pregnancy, I don't think the pandemic is a reason not to pursue that.